Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I wanted to do this video about SPFs. I wanted to tell you what it is, what the number factor is, how to prevent your skin from sun damage and also just explain which type of brands and what products you should kind of look for and the difference between SPFs. So if you like these videos, please press the subscribe button, like and feel free to leave any comments below. So I'm going to jump straight in with what is SPF. So SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor. So Sun Protection Factor protects you against the amount of UVA and UVB rays which pass through into the skin. So it normally ranges between 1 to 90. Obviously the higher um, the number, the less UV can get through and kind of damage your skin cells. So there are two different types of UVs. There's UVA, which is the aging rays. So this is the UV that you get all year round. So it comes through glass. It's also, it penetrates deeper. It's got a longer wavelength and it actually gets into the cells. And this is what breaks down the collagen, the elastin and damages the cells and actually ages you. For anyone that uses sunbeds, that's pure UVA rays that you get. And every single time you go on a sunbed, that is literally what you're doing. You are aging your skin. So you should be wearing SPF all year round. There's different numbers of SPF, which I'll get to when I explain the products. Um, but in the sunnier, if you're going on holiday, you're going to need to use a very high SPF. Also in the summer or if you're exposing your skin to long periods of time outside, you need to be wearing a higher SPF. Where in the winter, you can wear a lower SPF or if you're a darker skin tone, you still do need to wear SPF, but you can wear a really low one because you still need to get some vitamin D into your skin because darker skins are designed to be in the sun for most of the year so if you live in a climate where you don't get much sun you're going to need to supplement with vitamin D and also make sure that you are going outside when there is sun and UV to make sure that you are getting sun that's going to be absorbed into your skin. So you've then got um, so vitamin A does still um, contribute to cancer, but then you've got your UVB. So your UVB is your burning rays and these have a shorter wavelength. So this is what actually burns your skin. So when you're sitting out in the sun um, and your sun's directly on the skin, these are the UV rays that actually go into the skin in the top layers and they burn your skin and cause mutations in your DNA. So if that happens, that's how you get skin cancer. Your UVB can cause um, changes in skin color pigmentation. However, more the skin, like the elastin, the collagen, collagen that gets broken down is more through um, UVA, the A rays. And again, that can cause pigmentation, melasma as well to come out in the skin. So then you've got your blue light. So this is kind of, because of all the technology we use now, blue light is something that they're kind of testing and they're saying that exposing your skin and your eyesight to a lot of blue um, UV rays can damage your eyes and can contribute to damage on your skin. There hasn't been that much testing, so they're not, it's, they're not saying it's as bad as UVA and UVB, but um, a lot of opticians are saying they're seeing a lot of increased um, you know, eye strain and eye problems from people that are on their computer all the time, on the phone or watching TV. And, you know, the saying that our parents used to say when you'd be watching the TV, staring at it, you're going to end up getting square eyes and need glasses. And it's because of obviously the UVB uh, Blu-rays is reflecting in our eyes. Um, a lot of the newer SPFs, more expensive ones will say on the packet um, that it does cover UVA, UVB and Blu-rays as well. So that's something new to look for in your skincare. So what are the different SPFs? So I'm just gonna keep an eye on my notes here just to keep me flowing. So you get on your sun protection factor products, you get a number. So like this one, the CeraVe has got SPF 25 on it. Your Myceno Bargy one has got um, some, it will say broad spectrum sunscreen SPF 50. So basically the number 
protects you so if you went outside and your skin took 10 minutes to burn in the sun the number on the SPF actually protects you so this is a 50 this will protect me 50 times 10 so that will be 500 minutes and then I will need to reapply it so if you see SPFs that say once a day SPFs or you know anything that claims that you only need to put it on once and you're protected the whole day it's a lie and don't purchase it or don't put it on once a day you definitely need to be reapplying if you're on holiday every hour couple of hours in the summer if you're out um, over the park and you know laying out in it you definitely need to be applying SPF regularly and um, also another thing is some people have asked me this so if they wear a SPF say they're putting a 15 on their face and then their foundation has a 25 and something else has something else in you can't add SPFs up whatever product you put that's got the highest SPF so say if your foundation's got a 25 that is what you're going to get protected now obviously don't forget if your face is out in the sun you're going to need to reapply as well so personally for myself I always use the Zano Bargy on my face because I'm prone to pigmentation and melasma so I do not do not want to get any overexposure of sun on my face because it's going to make it worse. In the summer I always wear a cap or a hat and I try and avoid the hottest times of the day as well. Um, if I'm out in the park I will try and kind of sit in the shade because I don't want to age my face anymore. I did use sun beds when I was younger before I did my beauty training from about 17 to I think about 19 and as soon as I learned what they actually do to your skin, how much they damage you, how much they age you, I stopped um, using them. Also when I trained with their spa, they used to have a woods lamp where they turn the light off and they put this light over your face and it will show through any pigmentation oiliness, um, acne, anything that's under the skin and mine literally as soon as she turned the light off it blew up like because of all the sun damage that's under my skin. So even though I went on them for a couple of years I was using them constantly. Now as well obviously with hormones um, contribute to pigmentation and melasma which I'll do a separate video on that. But I'm now trying to treat some damage that I did when I was um, 17, 18 and 19 that is coming out in my skin. I get a lot of clients come in and um, you can tell their skin's thick, the skin quality, the pigmentation and this is hard to treat. This is not something that therapists um, can do. It will require a lot of laser treatments, a lot of very strong hydroquinone, tretinoin and even a really really deep skin peel where it literally takes every layer of skin off and um, it will be a few weeks downtime and the skin has to repair itself and even then afterwards the aftercare you can't get um, your skin in, skin in the sun at all because you, the pigmentation can come back. Uh, then as well that your collagen as well the whole firmness it's saggy it, you know for most clients it will you'll need to have a facelift all this can be prevented from using SPF from a young age wearing a hat and really trying to keep your face well cover all your skin to be honest but your face and here down onto your chest this is the most that I see it and it gets wrinkly it gets old like a leather handbag and you'll see like there'll be pigmentation marks as well a lot of people where SPF wasn't, you know, it's over the last few years, especially in sunny countries, they're really um, advanced on their SPF. Their children have been taught it at a young age to protect themselves. I know in this country, you know, I know people that used to put oil all over them, olive oil, do anything they could to get a suntan. And now this is what's coming out in the skin. This is why anti-aging um, business in the aesthetics beauty industry is multi-million because people want to reverse their aging they want to you know and it's all to do with you need SPF the sun damage is one of the worst sugar and diet is the second and yeah just prevention as well to prevent it from you know aging and just really looking after your skin and educating yourself again on products you need to have good products as well if you're buying a product that's really cheap that's a couple of pound 
the chances are that that's not going to protect you. It's why SPF is quite pricey and the reason is because it goes through so much testing for a product to claim that it's going to protect your skin against um, skin cancer, that you can put it on your children. There's a lot of tests and white papers and things that it, the companies have to pass, which is why a lot of companies don't all add SPF into them. If they're a company that's just starting out, the chances are that they won't have SPF. That's something that comes later on once they've made money. Um, but there are some amazing SPFs on the market at the moment. They've got ones that have colouring, um, they've got um, physical SPFs, chemical SPFs, which I'll explain in a minute, and also tinted ones for darker skin tones and invisible ones and um, all sorts of ones. Now, we really are getting really good brands of SPFs. Okay, so going back to the numbers on the SPF, so they will protect you against however long it takes you to burn, times the number, so 50, 25, 15, 30. So then, so an SPF 15 will protect you against 93% of UV A and B rays. An SPF 30 protects you against 97% of UV and UVA rays. An SPF 50 protects you against 98% of UV B and A rays. This means however long it takes you to burn, your SPF will protect you times that. So there's not really... There's only a 1% difference between an SPF 30 and an SPF 50, but you're going to get longer protection with a 50. You're going to get 20 times more than what you would get from the 30. So I know some people that only want to use SPF 30, they don't want to use 50, but I would always recommend 50 if you're trying to prevent aging, anti-aging, pigmentation, melasma, or you've got sensitive rosacea, acne skin. Um, and a physical SPF so the difference between there are two there's a chemical and a physical SPF so your physical SPFs how they work is when the UV is say shining on your skin your physical ones protect a have a protective barrier and it will reflect the UV off of it um, and then kind of like shatter the UV so it's a lot more gentler on the skin if you're someone that's got rosacea acne pigmentation they're better because the chemical ones what they have a protection barrier and what happens is they absorb the uv which can create heat on the skin so that can cause um, irritation again pigmentation melasma can be caused from heat because it makes if you imagine like a spider if you imagine the cell inside your skin when it's activated it has like almost like legs that it spreads out and then that's how you get the patches and it spreads around the skin because it's been stimulated and then that's going to make it worse. So with the physical ones it bounces off the UV, it doesn't absorb that heat and with the chemical ones it absorbs the heat and then it shatters them where the physical it just bounces off. But your... Um, Chemical ones are better for on holiday because they're more water resistant. Um, they can be more like cream like so they're a lot nicer when you put them on the body a lot of um, Kind of children's ones and stuff are, are chemical and they're not necessarily worse But for me when I go on holiday, I'll use a chemical one all over my body But then I will use my um, physical one this one put it on my face cap on. I don't put my face under the water, I will keep topping this up but um, the chemical ones are better because they're more water resistant so when you're going swimming and um, you know you just want like more protection and stuff and they're not as expensive as the physical ones. So the physical I personally always use on my face but chemical I use on my body. Some really good brands when I worked for Clinique, um, their SPF is amazing, it's fragrance free, it's all allergy tested as well, so it's perfect for children. Any of the dermatology brands, um, this is the CeraVe face one which is um, 25, this is an added moisturiser in there, they don't currently, or not in this country, stock SPFs for body and it's probably because they need to go through the tests and stuff I'd say they probably will do, do it because they're really growing CeraVe I love love this brand um La Roche-Posay as well do brilliant range Avion 
um, do really really good range they're all dermatologists they're all tested I'll put it down in the comments below um, so any of them type of brands ultra sun as well um, just be very careful again no fragrance or anything if you've got children and stuff you don't want to irritate them especially if they've got eczema and stuff like that um, but there are a lot of really good brands to choose from so then um, you must reapply these regularly as well so another okay so another thing sorry I'm going to go back to this so this is a mixture of a moisturizer with an SPF so when I worked in skincare for Clinique they taught us that basically if you have a product if you've got a moisturizer and you've got a separate SPF that SPF is been made to protect you against sun damage UVA UVB blu-rays your moisturizer has been made to protect your skin repair it um, ceramides whatever ingredients it's got it in there if you mix the two of them together in one product you're basically going to get half the benefit of the SPF and half the benefit of the moisturizer because you've added two products together so for me personally I love this this one the CeraVe one I normally use this in winter so where I need a little bit of protection but not too much this is something that I would wear like winter time for like summer now I would use a separate SP um sorry a separate moisturizer so whatever I was trying to correct with my skin if it was hydration if it was an antioxidant whatever I want to use I would use a separate moisturizer and then I would get an SPF 50 from a really good brand that I trust and use this on top because I want to get um the benefit of both of them so for me I think mixed products do have a place and I think if you're somebody that is on a budget or you just don't have time and you're not going to put separate products on then I think this is where these type of products come in however like I've just said for me personally I'm you know I'm into skin I love my skin I show you guys what I use I would use a separate moisturizer and a separate SPF um, if I was running out I'm going to the gym um, winter and then I would use this one there are also a lot of products now makeup that has SPF in it which I think is good it's better to have some SPF than have no, have no SPF in there but you also need to realize how you're not going to reapply your makeup six seven times well some people might but I know that I'm not I'm only going to put my makeup on once in the morning and maybe touch it up after lunchtime so if you're relying on a foundation to have an SPF on and you're out in the sun all day that foundation is not going to protect you all day against sun damage you are still going to get UV rays it's still going to be penetrating UVA goes deeper into the skin and it's still going to um, affect your collagen your elastin so I personally would use an SPF underneath or if there is like there are brands like Colour Science and there's a couple of other mineral brands that are using a mineral SPF which you can kind of top up throughout the day. I think, I don't know 100% sure but I remember watching something with Kim Kardashian and I don't know if she has one in her brand or she was asking somebody to make one for when she does video shoots and stuff because again like she wants to protect her skin but when she's wearing makeup you can't kind of take all your makeup off again put your SPF on again and then put your makeup on so I don't know if she has one or she was asking someone to make one um, but I know there are some new brands that are going into the kind of makeup that are making them but just again be very very careful when it comes comes to the face with wearing makeup so then, um, so skin colours have a built-in SPF. So if you're a darker skin, your skin will have a natural SPF in it. Again, it doesn't mean that you're going to be completely protected against getting cancer. And also, um, any skin type should be wearing some type of, of SPF. Um, so, different types of SPF so when you first put SPF on you're supposed to wait at least 20 minutes before you go outside and expose your skin to some because you need to let the SPF work if you're somebody now I've known a few clients that have said that when they've been to the doctors or um, uh, plastic surgeons or like Harley Street that sometimes they've recommended that they go out in the sun 
for, so, sorry for 20 minutes first and then put your SPF on now personally for me I don't want to get any sun on my face because it, it's going to increase pigmentation so I would put my SPF on my face first and then maybe go sit outside and have a coffee or something if you've got a garden in the morning to make sure that your skin absorbs some vitamin D and then put your sun you know or if you're on holiday just go out in the balcony just so that you can get some uh, vitamin D and then put, put your SPF on Obviously, if you burn, you're going to need to be really careful about this because some people even within minutes of sitting outside. But I do know that some doctors do recommend that you do get some exposure without SPF. It's something that people will argue about. Um, again, physical SPFs, um, they won't clog your skin. So if you're somebody that's got acne or rosacea, SPFs are better. A lot of the brands, the dermatology ones, they've all been tested on kind of acne skins, the Zainobagi one. Um, you can also get matte ones as well. So if you've got oily skin, your skin won't feel um, very shiny and oily. For rosacea skins, there are SPFs that have got titanium dioxide or zinc oxide tinted versions these ones are better and again so your chemical SPFs are made with chemical compounds that absorb and shatter um, better if you're swimming they're water resistant if you play sports and what to look for when choosing a SPF so you've got like I said your broad spectrum so it protects you against UVA UVB and if you want the blue light one now it will say that fragrance free I don't like any fragrance in products I don't think there's any need for it if you're somebody that's got sensitive skin acne rosacea when you open something can you smell it if it smells nice it will have fragrance in even if it says on the container natural fragrance mineral fragrance essential oil oil fragrance anything it is fragrance that has been put into the product to make it smell nice now ones that don't have fragrance don't necessarily don't smell nice but they just smell kind of clinic, clinical or just smell like a cream. It's not anything that's not going to want to make you put it on your skin but it's not going to be like oh that's you know that smells really nice. Um, so SPF of at least 30 or higher. I So this is a 25 which again I would wear in winter, I wouldn't wear it in summer. Anything lower than that, I don't really, unless you're a darker skin type, I don't see the point of putting it on. So I would always recommend at least 25 or 30 in the summer. To be honest, I would only really recommend SPF 50 unless you're a darker skin tone. Non-comogenic, uh, so again, so the dermatology brands um, are what I would go with. They won't clog the pores, paraben free, oil free. Now my skin doesn't like anything with oil in, whether it's natural oil, any type of oil, like sometimes I'll use coconut oil in my hair, which is amazing. But if I put it anywhere like too close here, I do notice that I wake up in the morning with like these little tiny spots because you'd be surprised how many times we touch our face. If I do that when I'm asleep and then touch my face, I will break out. So oil free as well. Clinique do a really good range of SPFs and uh La Roche Pose do some of the best um, SPFs. I've tried them. I like the Avion as well. So look at the pictures of SPS. Use whichever you like and will use. That's the main thing. So yeah, again, you do need to find an SPF that you do like to use. Some will like matte. Um, people with drier skin maybe will like a cream. Some people, this the Zainobagi one has a tinted colour, so the more you rub this on your skin, the darker it gets. So I do really like to use this one. It gives me a bit of a natural tan. Um, minerals, again, there's loads of range from minerals. Products with added SPF, so I've just kind of really gone through that. Um, it's diluting, so not everyone's going to reapply if wearing makeup. I've just explained that as well. So you need to find a product um, that you're going to be able to top your SPF up with. So how is SPF formulated? So sunscreen products are one of the most important categories in cosmetics. They provide protection from UV. There are three allowed UV filters, including four 
nano sized UV filters so again when they're testing them there's a lot that they have to test them and um, they cannot label them as 100% protection no need to reapply so they can't state that they will protect you 100% and they should not say that you only need to apply it once it should say on the sunscreen so this says directions 15 minutes prior to sun exposure apply a dime sized amount to clean skin and blend over face and neck a hint of color will slowly develop as the product is applied reapply at least every two hours for children under six months of age ask a doctor um, warnings for external use only do not use on damaged or broken skin when using this product keep out of eyes rinse with water to remove stop use and ask a doctor if rash or irritation develops and lasts keep out of reach of children if swallowed get medical help or contact a poison control center right away and it should have a little kind of pot that had a, has a lid off and it will have a number so this says 12 months so when you open it you have 12 months to use it so you can't I know people that do this and they'll like go on holiday and then they put their SPFs in the cupboard for like next year you have 12 months there's a reason you have 12 months the product goes off and it's not going to be safe again the next year you do not want to save your SPFs they're to be used that year for that summer and you should be applying them regularly throughout the day so you shouldn't really have any leftover to be saving for the next year and all SPF products should stay directions on them this one saying with UV protection fragrance free non con con conogenic sorry I can't say that um, AM SPF 50 no perfume developed by dermatologists and it's just got a list of ingredients as well so keep babies and young children out of the sunlight that's really common sense you want to avoid the hottest times of the day make sure they're using a hat reapply their cream safe to apply before and after exposure to sun and water so again keep topping up if you're swimming or you're playing sports must contain an spf factor low medium or, or high so i don't know about the packaging here but i have seen on other uh, some protectors that they will say whether they're low protection medium and high there are a lot of new regulations around them as well be very careful when you're buying online as well if you're buying off like ebay or amazon make sure that you are buying from a proper um certified company because you don't know what's in there and you don't want to buy an SPF and not really know if it's going to protect your skin or not um, SPF agreed through Europe Australia Canada before they are given the go-ahead they must pass all the tests and it costs a company a lot of money um, you can always go online and, and research a company as well like all their information should be on there about what tests their products have done and white papers and how much it costs and funding and stuff so I hope you all found that video really helpful. I know when I very first used to look for SPFs, I had no idea of what I was looking for or what to get. But I would just say, do your own research, find the SPF that you like and don't look at price. Just know that when you're gonna put something on, you're gonna protect your skin and also wear a hat and just prevention is key. I will see you guys in my next video.